Welcome to another How to Succeed podcast, the show that helps you get to the top and stay there. This is How to Succeed with the sales lessons from the movie Tommy Boy. The following podcast is copyrighted by Sandler Systems, Inc. and protected by U.S. copyright laws. Sandler is the worldwide leader in sales, management, and customer service training. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you're listening to this right now. That would probably be a good place to start. And if you need more information, go to Sandler.com. I'm your host, Mike Montague, Director of Community Engagement at Sandler, and my guest this week is Tiffany Kettle. She is a Sandler trainer from the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and we're going to talk to her about how to succeed with the sales lessons in the movie Tommy Boy. <music> Tiffany, welcome to the podcast. Tell me a little bit about Tommy Boy and uh, why we're talking about it here on our sales podcast. So Tommy Boy was uh, one of my favorite movies of all time. Chris Farley is uh, my spirit animal. And I think <laughs> there are only lessons to be learned from the movie. Yes, the motivational speaker. I mean, who doesn't love that? And, uh, you know, maybe one day I'll do an impression of the motivational speaker for you. <laughs> that sounds good. Uh, but so many great sales lessons can be learned from from that movie. And it came out actually when I graduated college and, you know, I used it in college. Um, it was just I think so many great things uh, can come out of that. Yeah, it, it's really funny. So I guess we should set it up up front that we can't play any of the clips from the, the movie and stuff. We didn't get the rights to Tommy Boy for this podcast. But uh, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. You can, I'm sure you can find it free or very cheap on uh, one of the streaming services or YouTube or something. Uh, but the gist of it is uh, this uh, father owns a, a car auto parts company and uh, he was a really great salesman, but his son just kind of goofed around was spoiled because they, you know, had the rich father and the father dies and they need to save the company. So Tommy boy has to go out there and learn how to sell very quickly before they run out of money. And so there are a lot of great lessons because I feel like a lot of salespeople either graduate from college or end up in a sales role, and they're kind of trying to figure it out before they run out of money in a, in a very similar situation. <laughs> Anything you'd add to our backstory? Yeah, no, that's that's perfect. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. One out of every eight jobs is a full-time sales position, yet there are very few sales training programs in college. So, you know, really interesting. And to some capacity, we're all in sales, right? We're all, we all go on a job interview at some point and all that is, is selling ourselves, right? So, uh, you know, Tommy boy, he went to school for seven years. You know, a lot of people go to school for seven years. <laughs> a lot of those, those people are called doctors. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. I got that one. I have a good college joke too. Um, I graduated or I, I went to the University of Missouri I already messed up the joke. I'm going to start over. Uh, I, I went to the University of Missouri after high school and I finished there in two years. Uh, a lot of people find that impressive. A lot of those people have degrees. Uh, you know, there's no there's no fences or walls or anything. You want to be done. You, you can just be done. Uh, I went and graduated uh, later, but uh, I very much related to that scene. And, and Tommy Boy, it was a great joke. All right, let's jump into it with these sales attitudes here and talk about uh, what are some of the things maybe that Tommy Boy does wrong at the beginning and what are some of the things he learns in his attitude as he goes on? Yeah. So in the beginning, you know, as you mentioned, um, Tommy Boy's dad passed away. Way. And so he has to jump in to save this, this company and he'd never really had a, a real job. So he's out there on the road and he's trying to be his dad. You know, he's trying to be somebody he's not. Um, and so he, he's, he's just not being himself. And, you know, that people can see right through that, you know, your prospects and customers, they can see right through that. And, and they're not going to want to do business with somebody who's not being genuine. So, you know, from an attitude standpoint, you be authentic, be genuine, be yourself. You know, you've, we've all got, you know, belief and in, in strong conviction about what we're selling. So let it shine through. Just, just be yourself. That's, you know, one of my favorite, you know, attitudes is, is be yourself. Yeah. I think the, the thing that was interesting to me that they demonstrated very well is that he had seen his dad sell. And I feel like when salespeople first get into the profession, 
they're doing what they see in movies and what they think the stereotypical salesperson should do. And so they're trying to either throw out slick lines, like, you know, like you can get a good look at a butcher, but, um, <laughs> but they don't really know what the moves are for or when to use them. And then sometimes they try and be a hard closer or it, they think they should be too nice and be a servant because they've heard the customer's always right. And they don't really know that balance of, of what to bring. And it is when you finally learn that you can be yourself and that you're really helping the client discover what their issues are and whether this is a right fit and that you're not really there to change anybody's mind or convince anybody or to be flashy. You're there to help somebody else get somewhere else. And you're more of like a coach than anything. I think that's really when people settle in. And anything else you'd add there on that or on attitude? Yeah, one 100%. Well, and, and think about it from a, a management standpoint. Again, there really, there are no sales management training programs out there. Very few, you know, like that Sandler has. And I know that's when um, I was trained as a manager in Sandler and, uh, you know, my eyes were opened because how often do we get into that leadership position and we're trying to create sales reps that are just like us, that sell just like us. So, uh, you know, when really, you know, everybody needs to be themselves again, um, be there's somebody else, uh, sales rep A is going to sell differently than sales rep B. And so you have to lead them, manage them differently and uniquely because they are unique and they will sell in their own way. And that's how they're going to be successful. Well, that's really great. And I think kind of uh, epitomized by David Spade's character there. I, I forget his name, but he is like, hey, let me show you how it's done. Like, you're an idiot. Stop that. I know that's not right. But then he tries to do it and he can't do it either. Uh, he, he offends the clients. And so I think like him as his coach ends up being like, well, okay, neither one of us have it. And, and sometimes he wants to give up, but he's also there just kind of like trying to help him uh, figure it out rather than um, having some perfect formula that he's trying to mold him into, uh, I think is a really interesting way to think about coaching there as well. That, that's cool. Yeah. Now let's move on to the behavior part, because I think this is where both of them uh, performed best. So when we talk about behavior here at Sandler, we're talking about their goals, plans, and actions. I'll seal, you know, some of the setup for you as I remember it, but they have a clear goal. They need to sell a certain amount of money to, to keep the factory open and, and save a whole bunch of jobs. Uh, they have a plan. They're going to go visit these clients and, and try to get orders and they take a lot of action. So they keep going even when they hear no and when it's not going well and, and they go all the way uh, until, you know, not to spoiler alert, uh, find success or, or not, but they go all the way till the end, which I think is really three great lessons. What, what did you see here in, in behavior? Yeah. You know what? They, they just did it. They hit the road. They took their maps. Hey, remember maps goes when maps goes? <laughs> I mean, think about how far we've come. You know, we can just now program it into our phone and it will calculate the best route. Um, but back in the back in the good old days, we used to have to pull out our maps and actually map out, um, you know, going from company A to B to C. So they really hit the road and, and they did it. They they made those calls. <clears throat> now they didn't always use great techniques. But um, they certainly, they did the behaviors that they needed to do. Yeah. And I, I think it's interesting. What advice would you have for salespeople nowadays? Because when we do think 20 years later, especially in auto parts, do you think he would have had the same success making 20 Zoom calls in one day rather than driving around, having time to process it, talk it out with David Spade and and move along? I mean, how how do you think that would handle if it was uh, if it was today? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, hopefully he would have taken a little more time to prepare. You know, they could have done some pre-calls, hopefully. You know, what questions are they going to ask me? What am I going to say? Of course, in Sandler, we talk about an upfront contract. Make sure you have that upfront contract and, you know, think ahead to the end. What do you want that outcome to be? So if, you know, you're working towards that goal, not sure they got that far in in their, their pre-calls, so... That that's a great point. I think definitely in the movie you think like, well, shouldn't they have brought somebody that knows something about the product or uh, somebody that is you know somebody else in the company that would have brought more value to the team than 
who they brought. But I think uh, I think that's a great lesson. And I do think there is something to be said for debriefing and coaching and having that time to talk about it that uh, we've lost when we're not driving as much. So we need to schedule that into our calendars now and and take time to decompress. Think about what happened, who said what and what we could have done differently and and, um, you know, post debrief those meetings as well as the the pre-brief that you mentioned yeah great point and time blocking you know make sure you're time blocking for that because you know i don't know about about you but i know people will um, insert themselves on my calendar if it's not blocked out yeah so uh absolutely and they fill up especially with zooms where they're just back to back and you're hanging up one and and you're going on to the other so Let's jump to technique because I think there is a lot of stuff that we can talk about here from technique because he starts pretty bad, uh, but does some things right along the way and ends up in an okay spot. It may be traditional uh, salesy in a way that most people would not sell, but but he's bringing his own attitude there. Um, Let's start with some of the things that he did wrong at the beginning or some of the things that you wouldn't recommend from from the movie Tommy War. Yes. So I think you started mentioning it early. Uh, <clears throat> you can get a good look at a butcher's. Uh, no, no. You can get a good look at a T-bone by sticking your head up a butcher's. <laughs> yeah. No, trying to use somebody else's line that just, it wasn't him. Right. So uh, from a technique standpoint, and I think one of my favorite scenes from the movie was uh, when he was in uh, on that sales call in one of the guy's office and he had some toy cars in front of him. And oh, so yeah. reenacts the scene. He's like, well, what my partner here is trying to say, and this is after, you know, Richard had gone in and used a bunch of buzzwords and features and benefits of why he should use them. And so uh, Tommy Boy jumps in and, and just reenacts, you know, hey, this is what happens when you use Callahan brake pads. There's a tire, you're driving down the road, there's a tire in the road and whoa, that was a close call. And then this is what happens when you use the other guy's brake pads. And he reenacts the whole scene. Car catches on fire. Guy's throwing up in the corner. Um, Just (laughs) at the end, um, the guy on the other side of the desk after he lit his his, uh, toy cars on fire, he's like, get out. So I love third party stories. So great third party story, probably the wrong technique. Poor execution. I love that you mentioned wrench, uh, Richard tried features and benefits too, and, and we definitely don't want to do that. So we we learned a, a good lesson in that part of the story as well. And then with the whole thing kind of goes around these guarantees and stuff too. And I find that really interesting because that is a feature and, and benefit. And later in the movie, he finds out that um, we're not really selling the guarantee, that there's a pain behind that. And that's what we want to solve. And he does kind of figure out in a Sandler way of selling to the emotional needs like he was trying to do in that that car story, but in a much more effective way of asking questions and leading people to conclusions about what would happen if you didn't or did have a guarantee, regardless of the product. Exactly. So uh, I I thought of a couple of other things that that I could ask you about, but I I wanted to know if you found any other techniques helpful in there or or things that resonated with you. Um, Yeah, so this is probably a little bit more of of an attitude as well. But when he's sitting down with Tommy Boy, sitting down with Richard at the restaurant and they are not selling wings, right? They had already shut the fryers off. And, uh, you know, he mentioned to Helen, he was like, Helen, you know, that's that's a nice name. And uh, he's like, this is why I suck as a salesman. And he goes into the the whole story is, you know, he's like, I've got, you know, I'm like Jojo, the the circus clown. And I've got my pretty little sale. And he's like, I love it. I stroke it. And, and then, you know, I kill it. I just rip it to shreds, my sale. And he gets emotionally involved. The whole point is he's so emotionally involved in, in the sale that, you know, he he's not really connecting and understanding his prospects and finding out what their pain points are. So he's making it all about himself rather than really focusing the attention on where it should be, which is with his, his customers and prospects. So, you know, really stay emotionally detached. That is so critical. Uh, I love that. I I think this was the turning point in the movie. And there's about three Sandler lessons here. That's where I I was going to go. I love that you hit that one because it is not being emotionally involved in the sale yourself, but trying to get the 
other party emotionally connected to to what's going on the other part of that is when he gets the wings uh richard asks him like what happened there how did you do that and he said well we have a meat lovers pizza in the trunk and he didn't need the sale so i think that's again going back to the attitudes a little bit but when he wasn't needy and he wasn't desperate and freaking out that he had to save his whole you know family business and and thousands of jobs he could sell a lot better and i think that's a huge lesson for salespeople that when you have a full pipeline when you have other opportunities when your sales are good enough that you're not worried about keeping your job or or making the next payroll if you're on commission or a business owner, then a lot of that stress goes away and you can naturally help people the way you would if you weren't quite so urgent. I know we all want to speed up the sale, but a lot of times speeding it up means taking a step back or relaxing a little bit to let the client move as fast as they want. And those are really tough lessons oh, to learn. Absolutely. You know, I have struggled with that my entire life, you know, and I'm like slow down to speed up. Um, because I, you know, I'm ready. I want to rush to that next stage. I've got the end goal in mind and how can I circumvent going through the process to get to the end? Um, but you, you just, you can't, you have to go through the process of, of discovering and helping your prospects discover their own pain. Sometimes they don't know. So it's our job to take them on that journey from, you know, what they, you know, what they don't know to awareness. So, and that's how, you know, we have to ask them good questions in order for them to figure it out for themselves. And it just takes time and patience. Not then I think the last, you know, technique here from the movie that I think we should highlight is really the bonding and, and rapport that um, Helen says, you know, you're sick after she hears, hears that story with the, the uh, role. And I think in a way she's saying, I'm sick too, I'll help you out. Like he related to her in a way that that she could connect to and that wasn't flashy and polished and it wasn't somebody else it was authentic like you've already mentioned and i think that's the lesson for salespeople here is a lot of times they think bonding and rapport means i have to bring a, tr a ton of credibility i have to be flashy i have to have the right answers to everything and i have to to put on some air that makes is going to impress the client rather than I need to be as authentic as possible, struggle a little bit. So this was the master lesson in, in Sandler terminology is okay, not okay. When he tells the story of how he's killing his sales is having a really bad day, Helen wants to rescue him then because he's not building himself up and putting Helen down. He's putting himself down. So she wants to help him up that a lot of good things happen in sales. When you realize that you don't have to be right. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to uh, be flashy or impressive or, or pushy. You can just be yourself and sometimes even struggle a little bit and say, I don't know what's going on here. Help me out. And you can figure it out together with your client. Anything you want to add on the, the bonding and rapport here or okay, not okay? Yeah, you're exactly right. Like, you know, people don't want to work with perfect people, right? It's super intimidating. So it's okay to struggle. Um, that's just, I mean, that's part of the human condition is to, to struggle and not be perfect and people want to help people. So, you know, I think that is, uh, always great to remember is, um, you know, it's, it's okay to not have all the answers and not be perfect. So just be yourself. Uh, well, you did it today and I appreciate you jumping on the podcast to, to talk about it again. Uh, I'm surprised if you made it this far, you've probably seen the movie, but if you haven't go check out Tommy boy, uh, we won't spoil the rest of it for you. Cause we've already, uh, spoiled a bunch of the good, great parts. It's a lot more funnier with David, uh, Spade and, and, you know, Chris Farley, but, uh, no offense, uh, to, it is. You know, yeah, to, no, no to it's us. okay. None taken. Uh, we're sales trainers. We won't end up in a van down by the river just because we can't uh, act like those two. Okay. So uh, when I want to get to know you a little bit more, Tiffany. To, at this point in your career, you, you've you know had successful businesses. You've become a, a Sandler trainer. How do you define success at this point in your career? I'm not a finished product, just getting better every day. So just, you know, also, um, you know, focusing on my successes. So rather than um, always seeing myself in the gap, looking back and seeing how far I've come. So that's something that, you know, has really helped me uh, just, you know, forge ahead. Uh, I like that one. I've been relating to that a lot recently. I think when you're a driven person and you set a lot of goals, sometimes that means you're always going and you're not mm -hmm. uh, celebrating the past successes and, and progress and 
uh, a bucket list can always feel like you're never, uh, and we never are complete works of, of progress. That was your other point, but um, it's hard to feel like you're enough if you're always striving for the next thing sometimes. Exactly. And we are all enough. So I love that you brought that up. And what was the biggest lesson learned or hurdle you had to get over in your career in order to be successful? Uh, you know, I think it's probably getting out of my own way, you know, and connecting with people in the manner that they need me to connect with them in. So, you know, that's what we talk a lot about, about DISC. And we, we study the psychology of bonding and rapport. Uh, and really it's, it's communicating with others in the manner that they need you to communicate with them because it's not about me it's about them so taking the focus off myself and making it about other people really is what it all boils down to i love it do you have a favorite sandler rule concept or uh, a quote or motto that you try and keep in mind i love them all but one of them, one of my favorites is a little boring but people don't argue with their own data because our job is to lead our prospects on that path to discovery um, and it's the same way with our kids right <laughs> Yeah, uh, for sure. And that's a great new rule in our new set of Sandler rules. There's 52 of them in How to Sell to the Modern Buyer by David Matson. So go check out that new book. That's a great call to action to go from here. If you need more information, you can also reach out to a local Sandler trainer or our enterprise team that deals with multi-location businesses at Sandler.com. Tiffany, thank you for being on the podcast. Uh, as always, again, if you're listening to this, send it to somebody that you think uh, needs to hear it, a fan of Tommy Boy, or a salesperson uh, that needs some cheering up. And as always, you can subscribe to the podcast. Thank you for listening. And whatever you are, be a good one. The How to Succeed podcast is brought to you by Sandler, the worldwide leader in sales management and customer service training with over 200 locations. For more information, visit Sandler.com. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click subscribe to get notified about future sales and leadership videos from Sandler. The Sandler Summit returns in 2023. Each new event builds exponentially upon the energy and success of the prior year. The 2022 Sandler Summit event was a huge success for everyone who attended, so don't miss the next one. Buy your tickets to the Sandler Summit at sandler.com summit.